Asia Irving's diving efforts pay off against Perry Hall. Franklin's Andreas Price levitates for this catch against McDonough. Perry Hall's Kara Dietrich with the golden goal, Darius Sample uses every inch of the end zone. All coming up next on BCPX 14. Welcome back to another action-packed year of BCPS Sports Scene. Fall sports are in full swing. We're going to start the year off with a look at a few of our fall sports teams, starting with the Western Tech Volleyball Team. Last year, the Wolverines recorded the best record in school history going 17-3 after losing in the state final game. With nine seniors returning this season, the squad's hope is high for another playoff run. The past two years, the Western Tech Volleyball team reached the State 1A Final Four, advancing to the championship in 2018 before falling to Clear Spring. The experience has brought the squad confidence. Uh, I think the expectation coming in last year, because we had made it to the uh, semifinals the year before, was that we wanted to get to the final game. Uh, but they know it's hard. They know that you win and you lose. There's only one team that's going to win the whole entire thing. And, and we're aware of uh, how good the schools are out west. And uh, it was just a great experience for them. They, they were very excited to, you know, get to that semifinal again and this time take that next step. Our sophomore year, we got to state semis. And that was the second time in school history. And then for the finals last year, it was the first time in school history. So it was like a new platform. And our school had never been seen in that light anyway. So it just, it kind of felt like we had a lot to prove. But we felt really deserving of it. We were so happy to be there to play in the state finals. We were, we really wanted to win that, uh, but I think our nerves just got kind of like the best of us. And they were a good team, so we got to give them credit where it's due. The strong core of seniors have grown together. Most of these people I've grown with like over the past four years, especially since now it's like senior year. Some of these girls like I played club with too, so like I've seen them grow like outside of school. And it's kind of like really good to see how like we're all evolving, we're all getting better. We've all gotten so close and we all know how to make each other feel better. We all do little things with each other where I can't treat everybody the same. We all have our own individual relationships. So it makes us so much closer as a team. And it allows us to play better on the court because we trust each other so much. So I know that my teammate got my back. This group really just loves being around each other. And, and that's certainly one of our keys to success is that they've been able to grow every season with each other. The players hope that this year cements a legacy and provides a solid foundation for the future of Western Tech Volleyball. We definitely learned now that we have to trust the process a little bit more. We can't rush things because we're playing for the end game now. We're not just playing for, you know, these games that we're playing day to day. We're playing for state. That's our, where our ultimate goal is. They enjoy going down to College Park and being a part of that. Uh, but I, I know that they really want to be able to compete in the county this year. So I think maybe it really motivated them to uh, come back and be ready for that. After winning their second consecutive county title last season, the Maverick boys soccer team at Eastern Tech is looking to capture the crown once again. Let's take a look at how their season is starting out. The Eastern Tech boys soccer team looks to continue their recent success. The two-time defending champions are working toward a return to the state championship which they won in 2017. Our expectations are always high, but we always fight for each other. We know that we have each other to lean back on if we don't. We always, we have this culture on our team where we always fight hard for each other. And if someone messes up, we pick each other up. We never set our expectations like, oh, we're going to win states. Like, that's obviously a goal, but our, really our expectations are just to work hard, play hard, train hard, and play as a team. Despite being a magnet school, the Mavericks have developed a culture that allows for consistent success. We're a small school, relatively. We don't have that many people to choose from when trials come along in the corner. But the very few members we do choose on, on the team, we're very competitive. So all throughout the year, we're getting better and pushing each other. Our strength is, number one, the players. They've empowered my assistant coach, Andy, and myself to make sometimes very difficult decisions. And we, in turn, give that respect right back to them. They understand that we're respecting them. They're understanding that we trust who they are and value their input and even their insight at times. And uh, when we have that kind of positive, interactive relationship with the players, everything works out well. Coaches definitely do their part in their leadership roles and 
encouraging our competitiveness and teaching us the basic skills. And then we have us, um, not just me or the other captains, but every single individual uh, plays a role on this team. We basically just try to come out and do the right thing every day. We, we do have, I must admit, we have a very disciplined approach to how we choose to play certain types of games. The kids buy into that. And if they do it consistently, minute by minute and second by second, in the end, the wins will come along for the ride. That's our general philosophy. This year's squad has a nice mix of abilities. Our starting 11 is all very experienced. And then we have a good amount of subs who are pretty experienced at the varsity level as well. And then we, have a, we also have a good amount of players that, got, that are coming from JV this year. I think it's just about our effort. If we all try our best and encourage each other, it's all about our team attitude and mentality. If our mentality is right, I think we can go very far. Delaney's cross country teams have been strong the last few seasons. Let's see how their training has been going so far this fall. Traditionally one of the top cross country programs in the county, region, and state, Delaney hopes to continue that tradition this year. We just have like a culture of excellence and hard work and it's really motivated by past success. We've had a lot of great runners come through here. Even Drew Daly just graduated last year and went to a D2 school and he was in one of the top five recruiting classes in the nation. So it's a lot of uh, excellence and just continued excellence. We have 95 kids registered and running and so that's really great. We have over 50 boys and uh, over 40 girls. So it's great to see that level of talent from the very best down to new runners. Um, and that's something I learned from Coach Boyle and working with him and trying to cultivate everybody moving forward. The Lions have developed a culture that continually turns out talented runners. Once people come in, people stay with the program, people work hard, so people see the success that we're having, like the upperclassmen and some of the younger people that are doing well, and they want to emulate that and want to kind of be like them. So. They'll try to run like they do and be consistent and come to practice. So I think just consistency with the younger people and like uh, the older people leading by example helps to keep that pipeline going of fast runners. There's definitely a mentorship with the older runners and the younger runners. Like the seniors kind of help guide the freshmen. It was like that my freshman year, which have definitely helped get me where I am in my running career. And I try as an upperclassman now to look as if I were a freshman and help them the way I was helped. But here we compete against so many people and there's always someone to look out for. But also there's so many teammates around you who are helping you with like everything. And it, it was really so much fun. It's hard and it's intense every day, but at the end of the day, you're able to accomplish things that you never knew you could. The team is optimistic for this season. We trained really hard this summer, and I think we have a really good chance of doing so much better than last year, so I'm excited about how far we can go this season. So this season, I mean, obviously we have a lot of goals. We want to win some meets, we want to win counties and win regionals and see how we can do the state meet. So I think definitely our goals, we're trying to set the bar pretty high. I think last year we were a little bit disappointed in how we did in regionals and states, so I think this year we want to try to turn it around and kind of see what we can accomplish. After winning six straight state titles, the Sparrows Point girls soccer team is racing full speed ahead for number seven. We have a look at what the team has been up to and how they train for the long season ahead. Last year, the Sparrows Point girls soccer team won an unprecedented sixth consecutive 1A state championship. The players that remain from the team realize how special that streak has been. It's unreal actually. Like it's amazing because not many high schoolers get to experience that. Like even once is like great, but I've done it three times and I really hope we can pull through with another one this year. Well, I started on varsity freshman year, so I've had three championships and it's it's actually been a really, really, really good experience for me. Like it's a lot of the girls just made everything so much better. This year's squad faces more turnover than in previous years, which will be a challenge to overcome. We've always had a big target on our back, so losing players that have been on this team since they were freshmen and amazing players that we lost is really hard, but um, I think the freshmen are doing like really, really well so far this season. I think they'll continue to grow and get better. We have most of our core defense returning, so we're looking for um, 
these new varsity players or returning varsity players that maybe didn't start last year to fill some integral roles in the midfield. I think we still got the skill and definitely still have the motivation to win another state championship. Um, we just have to work a little bit harder because we don't have like as much skill as we used to, but I feel like if we keep working harder, we'll get to that point again. Compounding the challenge for the pointers is a step up to the 2A classification. It's gonna be a lot of pressure, but I feel like we can push through it. I feel like we all have the skills and the talent to achieve winning all of our games, but I feel like we can, we can keep our streak going. I think every game in 2A is gonna have to be well played. We, you know, we can't have a bad game, you just gotta be on, on top of it for the entire playoff season. Now for a field hockey highlight between two longtime rivals as Hereford traveled to Delaney for a non-conference matchup. The Hereford Bulls met at Delaney to face the Lions in a field hockey matchup. The game begins with the Lions having the first good scoring opportunity. Number nine on the Lions, Kate Profrock, misfired on the shot. The Lions earned a penalty corner, but the Bulls defender, Sidney Powell, was able to clear. Delaney gained the second penalty corner. Audrey Dickens passes to Lucy Lung. Audrey Dickens is giving back the ball and passes to number 11, Becca Puente, whose scoring attempt found its way into the goal for a 1-0 lead. The game heats up as Hereford's offense continued to apply pressure, but Delaney's defense was up for the challenge. While trying to pass the ball, Emily Mowbray was intercepted by Anna Brandt from the Bulls, bringing it back down the field. From the corner, the Bulls captain, Chloe Parker, passed to Anna Brandt, who was given the opportunity to score, tying the game 1-1. Facing a challenging opponent, the Lions prevail in scoring with the help of number 16, Emily Mowbray, giving the Lions a 2-1 lead. Kay Profrock sets up for the penalty shot, only to be blocked by Hereford's goalie. The score is still 2-1. A block by the Bulls captain, Chloe Parker, sends the ball back towards the goal, giving Hereford a fighting chance. Hereford comes back down the field, only to have the shot deflected by the Lions goalie and cleared by Lucy Long. The Bulls and the Lions challenge each other and prove to be tough competition. Hereford's blocks and Delaney's defense continue to be present as the game is coming to a close. A last minute goal attempt was made by Hereford's Emily Reddy, but it was successfully blocked by Delaney's Mae Jones. In the last final seconds of the game, both teams continued to play hard and remain tough competition for one another. As the game comes to a close, Hereford gave it their all, but the ending score remained 2-1, declaring the Delaney Lions the winners in this epic matchup. Close game and nice win by Delaney. That's a wrap on our first episode for this school year. Keep an eye out for our next show. As always, thanks for watching and make sure to follow us on Twitter at BCPS Sports Scene for ongoing updates.